Hi, hello, good morning, good hello. afternoon, good evening from wherever you are joining us. Uh, and also, uh, Mingalaba, uh, welcome to this morning's art, archaeology and art history program organized by the Tomasic History Research Center. Uh, my name is Noel Hidalgotan. I'm one of the co conveners for this program. Uh, and this morning, we bring ourselves to Myanmar, where we'll hear about the archaeology of Myanmar, specifically about the kingdoms of uh, Bagan and Mo'u. And on that note, I, I have to unfortunately start with some sad news, but it would not be right to start a session about Bagan and Rapu uh, without mentioning the sad passing of uh, Professor Michael Ongtwin, uh, who's a noted scholar in Burmese history. Uh, he just passed away, uh, and I, I received the word yesterday. And also a few weeks ago, we, uh, we saw the passing of Professor San Shui, who is the head of the Department of Archaeology at the University of Rangon. Um, so let's just take a, a, a few, uh, few seconds to observe a, a moment of silence. Now, um, please allow me to introduce this morning's uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Ye Nyat Nguyen. Uh, Mr. Ye Nguyen, uh, Ye Nguyen worked in the Department of Archaeology and National Museum in Myanmar for eight years. He was a tutor in the Field School of Archaeology in Gye and a junior research officer in the Division of World Heritage Sites and at the Bagan Archaeological Museum in Myanmar. So he's very qualified to talk to us today about uh, Bagan uh, and Mapu. He received his MA in Archaeology from Yangon University. Uh, and right now he's at an Erasmus scholarship studying um, um, archaeological material science. Um, last year, he was at the Aristotle University in Thessaloniki in Greece. And uh, next year, the coming term, he will be in uh, Apienza University of Rome. Uh, and right now, he's joining us from Venice. So before I turn the floor over to Mr. Yemiet, uh, may I remind everyone uh, that the chat function, uh, please free to, uh, feel free to use the chat function for technical help. And uh, the Q&A box is for questions and answers, but uh, you can leave questions and answers anytime. We'll have some time at the end of this um, uh, talk to address questions and answers, but please leave your, your name and affiliation so that you know uh, where you're coming from. Um, and there's no Chatham House rule for, uh, for these series of lectures. We intend to put these lectures up uh, online. And so, we decided that we'll, we'll not have the Chatham House room. So we're not going to say whatever stays in this room uh, stays in this room. Uh, and so without much further ado, may I uh, turn the floor over to uh, Mr. Ye Mian Lin. The microphone. <clears throat> um, good morning. Good morning, every, uh, everybody. So my name is Yem Yat. Uh, <clears throat> today I would like to talk a little bit about the archaeological evidence of the Bagans and Arakans in early second millennium AD. <clears throat> Today talk will not be the very advanced the, for uh, because of the uh, Bagans and Arakans. The study of Bagans and Arakans is very wide, uh, and so today my talks will be the very little introduction and then brief to about the Bagans and Arakans. <clears throat> In Myanmar, there's there's a uh, over. Uh, Around uh, 200 ancient city had been, uh, how say, had been uh, uh, explored by the archaeologists and then historians, but uh, <clears throat> but uh, only few of them is uh, really studious and then uh, really the preserved. <clears throat> among, among them, so Bagan and Rau is uh, uh, most significant and. In most most significant ancient cities of Myanmar, and not only in Myanmar but also in South Asia, because it is a westernmost uh, westernmost cities in the South Asia. 
<clears throat> uh, first of all, I would like to talk uh, about the, a little bit about the program. <clears throat> Here's the map of the began. Uh, Sorry, um, Yen Yen, you uh, set your slide show to on the screen, please. Yes, doesn't so? Ah, like this. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. This is the map of the Bagan. Uh, Bagan, is, uh, Bagan, Bagan is located in the heartland of the Myanmar, and it, it, it is uh, it's on the in the drying uh, drying drying zone of the Myanmar, and it's a uh, uh, east eastern side of the ALG River. <clears throat> Historically, uh, um, how do you say? Chronically, in Burmese belief, uh, uh, Bagan was uh, established uh, around in the eighth century to uh, eighth uh, century AD to the thirteenth century AD. Uh, uh, but uh, but the most peak uh, peak uh, peak time of the Bagan is in eleven to the thirteenth century. This is what we can see in the map is uh, in the 11th century, 11th century began uh, monuments and the 12th century began monuments and the 13th century began monuments. <clears throat> uh, I would like to start from, from the began uh, on the uh, Bagan architect, architecture, architecture monuments. In, in Bagan, there, uh, there's a lot, to, over 3,000 uh, monuments. And there's uh, over 3,000 Buddhist monuments in Bagan, uh, especially their uh, temples, and then some of them are uh, stupa and monasteries and cave, uh, cave temples and cave monastery. So uh, I would like to start talking about the, about the uh, evolution of the evolution of the stupor in the stupor in the bagan, and then type typology of the stupor in the bagan. <clears throat> the earliest type of the bagan uh, bagan stupor is a uh, barbarous type of stupors. It's uh, it's uh, it's believed that it's uh, this typology this type of uh, this type of stupor is derived from the uh, derived from the pew uh, pew. Pew stupor, uh, we can see in the in the we can see here in the in the in the left and the, the right. <clears throat> then uh, then this uh, this it's able to the another type of the tall slender type stupors, and then uh, and and then another type is uh, and <clears throat> uh, tall stupor type more developed types. Type of the another uh, Mingaba, Mingaba, uh, another uh, from the number uh, one three two eight from the Mingaba. <clears throat> so another type is another type is the bell shaped stupor. It's more of that, more of more of uh, more of this type. Is we can see also in the like a uh, like a uh, um, Sri Lankan type of the stupor as well. You can see. This is the Sri Sandra Bogoda. Is uh, it's also the bell shaped stupor in Bhakka. Is is as researchers believe, uh, especially, uh, especially these 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 beautiful uh, drawings are made by the UMA, and uh, so so he believed that the, these are these 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 uh, architectures a combination of their prototype of cube. Uh, Prototype pews and the uh, uh, later, later, uh, I mean, like Sri Lanka pew prototypes and Sri Lanka Sri Lankan combination of uh, of the stupor. 
these are their cave temporal remains. So I would like to move on to the temporal architecture. So earlier, earlier scholar believed that so temples, uh, began temples in uh, I said evolved from their Q, Q temple, uh, this this type of Babel Gu temple. But later, we we have been find out archaeologists find out that these kind of Babel temples, like Fairtown temple, this type of temples are not really the, not really early early the early the temples, and then not the prototype of the Bagan temple. It's actually the late Bagan so Bagan period temple, but it is on the pure area. But it's their Bagan temple. It's not a prototype of their uh, Bagan the monument. So, so, but, uh, so, uh, how the how the Bagan temples evolved? <clears throat> you can see here the earliest type, earliest, earliest, uh, earliest. Earliest temple we can find in Bagan is the Bangku Pia, Bangku Temple. It's a it's a very uh, uh, it's a very um, typical pew, pew architecture because of the pew, uh, early pew temples are more like a cell, not uh, brick cells, just the cell. Not uh, there is no uh, central central poles or central central pillar, they have the just a cells building, this type of temple we can find. And then earlier, earlier began temple are not, uh, are also cell. And then we can see like uh, in the, in the uh, um, palate, uh, palates, they are cell, but uh, it's uh, mounted by the stupa on the, on the cell, uh, top of, top of the cell, they, uh, they add the, they added the stupor. So in this in this way, the, the stupor of the uh, I mean in this way, temple of the temple of the began became developed. So uh, pure archi pure architecture and then began uh, began temple architecture is related, but uh, uh, related, but uh, not uh, not all we have uh, considered as pure is not really pure. Let's move on about the, a little bit about the mural paintings. There's a 485 temples we can stay, we can stay see the see the uh, mural paintings in Bakam. Bagan mural paintings are uh, began mural paintings uh, are, are usually use the yellows, reds, and um, greens. Uh, but uh, I didn't find any of the blue colors on the Bakan paintings. Maybe it's uh, maybe blue became a grayish, or they never used the blue color. I don't. But uh, we need a scientific a scientific test for that. Uh, but uh, but I found out uh, some similarity between the lacquerware modern day lacquerware uh, techniques and. Um, and paintings, mural paintings. So in the modern day, modern day, uh, oops. modern day, uh, mur uh, modern day lacquerware also do not use the blue color. So uh, maybe becomes uh, mural paintings also do not have a Bacan color as well. But uh, we have to text, uh, we have to we have to do the scientific uh, analysis. The, the right one is the one of the earliest example of the mirror paintings is the uh, um, cloth paintings of Bakan. Bakan mirror paintings are depict uh, usually depict usually the story of Buddhas and then Jataka story and then some uh, other uh, story. This, you can see also see that some of the Mahayana's uh, European Mahayana's depictions, but uh, and then it's very similar to the, some of the Himalayan art. But uh, what's the difference with the Himalayan arts and Myanmar's uh, Bagan's and European painting is, 
is a is a, it's like a other depiction depiction of the Mahayana's art, uh, like other depiction of the Mahayana's art in Saudi Asia. Bagan mirror painting it also do not include a very how to say uh, uh, scary form of the form of a uh, uh, deity. In the Himalayan art, you will you will see very uh, scary form of form of the uh, deities. But in Bagan arts, it's uh, really rare. It's uh, just like uh, other, uh, I, I mean, like Angkor arts. Um, in this matter, why we is Himalayan arts and Bagan arts are similar? This is uh, this also will be the questions. Um, in my opinions, uh, in my opinions. Both of the Himalayan arts and the in the Bagan arts share their uh, share their art uh, techniques and concept from the from the Palat and their uh, Bengal from the Bengals and Bihar. So in this matter, as we became similar, but uh, maybe not directly sharing between the Himalayan arts and Bagan, but uh, uh, indirectly shared by the Palat or Bengal Bihar. In Bagan, uh, we can also see there's a, there's a tradition of the uh, depiction of the Jalkas on the terracotta plates and the glaze plates. So earlier, earlier plates are written in the Mon, Mon language, but uh, later also uh, writing in the Burmese. Let's, let's move on to the iconography. <coughs> So these ores are from Bagan, but uh, it's pretty much different. Why did they are different? The first one is the Gopta Stein, Gopta Stein Buddha image. And the second one is the Pew Buddha image. The third one is the 11th century Buddha image. And then uh, the last one is, is the 12th or 13th century. Why are they all different in the founds in Bagan? The first one may be the earlier, but um, the direct, directly copy, directly copy uh, replication of the Gupta arts because of the uh, Gupta arts. Second one is found in Bagan, but these are this is the pure uh, Buddha image. It's uh, the position is uh, um, very typical pure image. It's a uh, it's a double Vidaka mudra. Double Vidaka mudra is there. Are, Earlier, earlier than the Vidaka mudras in pure art is the Vidaka mudras in uh, Katka Hashta mudra. It's uh, these these time of the arts is derived from the Sri Lanka. The, this this time of mudra hand gesture is uh, derived from the uh, Sri Lanka Sri Lanka iconography in the sixth century AD. Okay? Um, and and the others is influenced by the, the I mean like uh, uh, heads, um, and hair styles is, are influenced by the southeastern south southeastern uh, Bengal. But fixture appears is totally is very similar to the earlier pure art. It could be the nine or tenth century. Buddha image, but uh, it's uh, it's it's not uh, it is it's found in the gun, but it's the pure you can say it's pure image. The third uh, the third one is from the Cleveland Cleveland Museum. It's uh, it's eleventh century image of Buddha, eleventh century image of Bagan. It's very similar to the Palace art, and Pala art. Uh, so you can see the flexy, flexy nose, uh, um, the, uh, a full uh, lip, and then uh, ears are touching, they're touching their shoulders, something like that. And then the in the 12th century and 13th century, then the Palestine, Palestine, or the Buddha image have changed to another style. Uh, there's a two uh, two possibility of the changing. Why in the, this this 
the Palestine to the localized times or another time change. There's a two possibility. The first possibility is because of the influence of influence of the Central Asia and the East Asia uh, to the East Asia. The, another possibility is uh, um, for the when we uh, when we see the big bogus, uh big Buddha image. Uh, what do you say? Um, we, we need to when the perspective is changed because of that the, the, that 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 image have had is bigger and then body is smaller and then if you go to the if you go to the camper if you go to the camper you will see uh, if you're standing and then you look at the face of the buddhas and um, and then uh, the, according to the, according to, because of the perspective perspective view the if the bigger have uh, big has the bigger you, you will see the uh, uh, how do you say? It's, it, you is, uh, it's a perspective. It's a perspective view is uh, how do you say? Uh, better view for the and then uh, that's why the it, the the image is not really not really for the not really doing uh, doing for the bigger head, but uh, it's uh, it's they they want to show it's same. Uh, when it's a uh, it's reduced the perspective view, view so, so that's why it's they make a bigger hat and a smaller body and when you look at when you look at from the ground it's a uh, you will see more uh, um, better view of the Buddha face uh, let's move on the hydrological work hy hydraulic 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 works of their backgrounds in Myanmar, people believe that uh, Bagan was once Bagan was not dry, and now Bagan is dry uh, because of the because of the brick baking and in the, to to build these old stupas. It's not, but it's not true. Why Bagan was always dry uh, in the dry zones, but uh, could be drier than before. Dry, drier than before wines. One is that it's because of the lack, uh, how do you say, uh, pre uh, engines and hydraulics works already uh, broken. And that's why uh, uh, it began, became more drier, but, uh, but not because of the break, uh, break uh, production. We can stay. We can stay. Uh, we can. Uh, how do you say? We can stay straight from the satellite map for the began begans uh, uh, as it began as, uh, uh, lakes and the uh, lakes and canals and moats from the satellite uh, satellite map. You, we can stay traced there. I would like to move on to the Mrau. The Marawi is also known as the city of Arakans or Arakans. And by the foreign uh, foreign records, it's just simply saying Arakans. It's uh, not just only the region, but also the city, and but also the Kaladan River is also called as Arakans. Arakan was known the since the uh, since, uh, since, uh, Helen, Hellenist uh, time. I mean, like a uh, uh, two century around the two century AD, it is Greek calls uh, Agi it means the silver land, um, and then the later Latinized version is Argentia, and also like um, earlier 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 European records say the Rakans, and then uh, later say Arakans. So then the map is show their uh, uh, medieval reconstruction of the Ptolemy's map of Ptolemy map of the uh, two century AD. You can see the you can see the Argentia is there. This is a sixteenth century um, map map. Uh, so you can see there are our account is the Portuguese.
then near the goal. We'll talk a little bit about their uh, history, history before, but uh, history before Mao. Um, I reckon in historiography, the uh, chronicle mentioned about the Nila Bandung, uh, Nila Bandung Chabudons, which is the very north of the Arakan state, uh, very, very north of the Arakan state and the and Mount currently the Chin state. Um, it's, but uh, archaeologists explore there, but uh, there is no evidence of, you know, there is no evidence of uh, the city have not found yet. Um, the, another significant city is uh, Danyavati, which is believed that one of the earliest city and uh, city state of the Arakans. Uh, and then there's a Wetali. <coughs> Witali, uh, Witali, Witali city, Witali is, and the Witali is a use of the Sanskrit, Sanskrit, Sanskrit inscriptions and fonts, and the um, three first stars and bulls or coins are used there, are used in the Betali period. And then later, after the after the Betali period, so the Limro period is starts, you can see the crates and sample works Inside uh, these old cities are uh, not uh, developed like uh, Mrau. So that's why I would like to focus on the Mrau more. Uh, this is the this is this is the 18th uh, uh, 19th century, early 19th century map of the fortifications of Mrau. Rau, Rau was established in the 14, uh, 1430s, uh, 1430s, and then it was modified in the 1513s by the King Myanmar. But in the and in, in the in around this time, the, the most of the Rau was built in around in this time, I mean 1530, around the 1513s. And like the Bagan, Bagan the Mrau, also, Mrau have a lot of rich of not only the uh, religious monument, but also we can see a lot of the, a lot, a lot of the, I would say, um, urbanization, urbanization, uh, urbanization uh, uh, monuments, not only the religions, but it's something like the city gates, uh, fortifications, um, palace sites. And a lot of the physiological uh, and hydrological hydrological structures. This is a palace size. Have uh, three walls, and then it was used. It was used for three, over three three hundred years. Uh, for, and then forty nine king uh, were reside there. The, the palace is for their not only for the royal resident but also for the uh, administration uh, administration uh, uh, office and the uh, accessory. The palace was uh, uh, foundation of the palace was uh, Samsung, but uh, it was built by the uh, built by the wooden treasure. But then currently we cannot see anything any the remain of the wooden uh, remain, but. Uh, why but how we can know the we can know the about the nouns uh, such of now is uh, from the uh, augustinian's uh, monk uh, manrix mentioned about the uh, palace of Mrau. the Mrau was built with the uh, built with wooden and then gilt uh, and then gilded all their all the all the palace yeah, it's was mentioned by the Manic. Uh, and also we can see, we can find the um, ceramic uh, floor. Yeah, 
if you see about them Rao, if you if you know about the little bit about the Rao, the Campo stupor in the stupor in the Rao is very uh, strange. It's not like a, it's not like a, from the mainland Burma, so it's not like a Tampo, it's not like the stupor from the Thailand. It's not like uh, Namorals or Thailand, but why it was uh, like this? In my in my in my in my uh, opinion, it's a uh, Rao architecture is a revival of the architecture of the revival architecture of the Waitali periods. Uh, and so, in the Waitali periods and Rao periods, if you can, uh, it's a uh, at least it is a uh, uh, how to say Rao Rao. Um, Established after the 400 years, 400 years uh, after the Witali periods, but why? Uh, but the uh, Rao architecture is uh, uh, replicate the earlier earlier architectures of the Witali. And in my point of view, this is uh, the the brick structure is uh, from the Witali periods. And then, and then uh, the, we can say, see this small, uh, small stupor from the Waitali periods. These, in that one, in the, the Rao stupors are very similar to you, you can see, uh, you can see. And then the uh, Waitali period stupors are also very similar to the one from the Odisha, Odisha, I mean, like something like the Retinagi, uh, Retinagiri, so, um, yes. Uh, so from the archaeological side, from the Buddhist side, from the Odishas, is uh, is how to say is Rao. I mean Rao or Witali is in the on uh, the west, uh, in the eastern shore of Bay of Bengals, and Odisha is the western shore of Bay of Bengals. I mean, like the end of Vesali, Vesali period, they share each other the similar similar architecture style, but the end of Rao Rao periods when um, it's Rao in the in the Rao periods. Um, the Rao, uh, it's a Rao architect copy the uh, earliest Vedali Vesali's time. So that's why in there, the architecture is not like uh, Burmese or in the other Swing and South Asia. This is uh, this is Mahabodhi Shwebu. This is one of the important, uh, important uh, uh, temple because of the, it's it's a uh, it's a study change the Rao uh, architecture uh, architecture uh, architecture, uh, architecture construction is it became uh, started to change because it's uh, from the typical 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 dome shape it started to change into the orthogonal orthogonal shape and then. Uh, also, as depicts of the the depict of the uh, cosmological inside the cosmology of the world, and then uh, uh, Buddhist cosmology of the world, and you can also see the uh, some Hindu 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 uh, um, uh, deities, and then also others Buddhist deities as well. And others like uh, a Buddhist belief, uh, like um, um, the hell, and then also like uh, like other de depictions of daily life, and uh, like uh, warriors, uh, dancers, something like that. And then so here's I wanted to add wine, the wine, the Hindu deities, and the Buddhist art. In the Arakani Buddhism, they always have space for the space for the always have space space for the the, uh, the Hindu, Hindu gods and the, something additional because of the um, and the because of the uh, not uh, it's not they are not directly uh, absorbed but uh, it's when we it's a uh, Hindu 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 gods Hindu deity come to the Buddhists and then. Uh, and their Arakanese art, it's became a, it's became a, um, Buddhist versions of a Hindu mm, Hindu god. One of the most uh, important uh, and the most one of developed uh, uh, temples of the Arakans is the Chittong.
the Chitan Temple is uh, and uh, symbolize the and the Chitan Temple you will, you will see the lot of uh, gold uh, god uh, in draft and then even uh, these or these or uh, how do you say Indra Indra and some the uh, um, deities re actually represent the uh, represent to the kings uh, kings or kings powers. The in Mrau period this is usual because of the and then uh, the um, when the king donating. When the when the king uh, um, donating or building something, it's a it's a reflect to the king's will. It's a it's a reflection of the king's will. So and it's a it's a kind of a speaking a king's uh, message to the people, or king want to show the his uh, his um, abilities, or uh, something that some king uh, I've seen something like that. A lot of uh, Arcanistic uh, kings, uh, how do you say, uh, from uh, the Surya's image, um, the sun. This means uh, uh, he is a more most important, like uh, like the sun. And then uh, is uh, a sun in the Hindu Hindu god sun. Uh, Surya's have uh, two powers of the uh, two powers. Uh, one is the uh, uh, soft powers, uh, something like diplomatic powers. Other, other is like a, uh, other, other, other is like a, um, warriors. So it's, uh, the king want to show uh, his two kind of uh, ability he has. So that's why he want to show. And then also like uh, here is also like he he show the the, the Indra, the king of uh, king of the gods. So it is uh, he he want to also show he's uh, the king of the king. So and then yeah. yeah. So it's a kind of giving a message, all the, yeah. The most important uh, uh, significant things in the Mrau is, uh, is the fortifications. It's not like typical, typical, Saudi, uh, typical earlier Saudi Asian, uh, uh, Saudi Asian, uh, fortification especially not like the bodies uh, because of the modes are totally different uh, something like the gates are uh, gates uh, but the gates are very similar to other south asia uh, city because of the it's a very strong uh, uh strong and massive uh, gates with the door in the Mara we have seen or we have we have in uh, we have in and um Nine gates already, and uh, can be, can stay explored. Uh, Father Father Frin Frinia, Father Frinias once said about the road. And it is it is make compare comparison with the bandits. Um, uh, he mentioned about the Mrau is more 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 complicated uh, complicated structure than the bandits. It's uh, uh, something like that. So, uh, oh, it's very similar to the bandits, but uh, it's only in the only in the waterway. But the Mrau is more complicated. So he he, he wanted to say he, he said once. So he is a seventeenth um, century depiction of the Mrau. So you will see the waterway. He use the water as a uh, use use the water as a uh, daily transportation inside the city, like a menu. The map show the um, 
moats and their natural lakes and moats and then uh, fortifications. In Marawi, the fort in the fortification, they use the natural natural barriers and then the, some of the uh, some of the area they can they, they integrate the natural barriers, natural natural fortification. They integrate the natural fortification with the, some sometimes it's with the sandstone, sometimes it's with the other uh, other embankments and yeah. Uh, Sometimes it's with the moats and the lake, and so they integrate the natural barriers, and natural natural uh, uh, fortification with uh, what they can do. This already. That the railway water management system was uh, explored by the Italian hydrologist. Uh, uh, Italian, yeah. he he's, he's, uh, he he suggests he thinks that uh, the he explored about their uh, um, salutes salutes of the uh, salutes in the river salutes in the river uh, I mean the water to to prevent the flooding and then to uh, how to say to switch the waterway when its water is too much of when water to, can too much you, they can switch to the uh, the water to the other another way um so the mug is not on the some of the mug is not only for the defenses but also for the keeping the water uh or to uh, to keep the water uh, to keep uh, from the flooding Maybe, but also for the agricultural purpose as well. Let's talk a little bit about the iconographies and sculptures. So it, there's a lot of a uh, very complicated. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, icono uh, iconographic uh, How do say? A lot of things to study on iconography so now, but uh, here I would like to study. I would like to talk about only one uh, image, only one uh, one type of image. So this type of image is believe uh, some scholar believe is Amita is is a Samboga Samboga uh, Samboga Kaya Samboga Kaya of the Amitabha. I mean Samboga Kaya of the Buddhas. So this is the Mahayana tradition. Um, Amita is Samboga Kaya. So, but the, in the Mrao periods, there is no evidence of the Mahayana 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 or Mahayana's concept doesn't mention on any text of the Mao period. So, but why is Amita is here? Yeah. So Pamela Gatman says, believe that this is just, uh, um, this is, there is no uh, Mahayana's concept uh, behind behind the image. This is just imitation of the image, just, uh, so, but uh, why, why exactly that image? Why exactly? Is, not the others uh, Mahayana's image, but why in this image? And then also, it's very similar to the Jabu uh, Petit's image of their um, uh, times and their bummies. Um, in my in my opinion, uh, why in this Amitayu is uh, became uh, popular in the um, now period is because of the also because of the. Um, revival from the Vesal period. We, I think that the, the Amitayu is popular, is a popular image in the, maybe a popular image in the Vesal period. And the Vesal periods also uh, have a, also have a Mahayanism in the Mahayanism. So at the time, Amitayu might be their, um, my significant image, but, uh, but in the, when we became the Mrao periods, that image is, uh, this heritage they will see from the Mrauls also they they how to say they replicate always and then this type of image. This one Amita is, is uh, became a popular image in the Mrau, but uh, there is no concept of the uh Mahayanism in the Amita. Let's uh, proceed about a little bit about the language and the la language language in the writing system of the Mao period. 
according to their inscriptions and all evidence showed the Rao kings or Rao kings and Rao people are mostly um, Buddhist but uh, they also use then they have also name uh, they have also have uh, names of Islamic names and not and they also have a uh, Pali uh, Pali name they also have a uh, local Arakanese name <clears throat> Why, why they also use their um, Islamic names and they, why they also use their, their Persian scripts and Arabic and the Bengali. Why? It's because of the Mrao was occupied, uh, Mrao was, um, uh, Mrao, Mrao, King, Mrao, Mrao Kingdom was extended, can, uh, was can be extended into uh, till the how do you say in the uh, Shidagong areas and then the, in the, his uh, his uh, old areas uh, I mean like uh, uh, very diverse uh, ethnic cities and cultures is diverse so the Mrao, the Mrao king will show show the how do you say um, is it. Uh, uh, it's a equal, equality to the old people, not only the dead, but also, but also the, he, would, he have to make a trading with the Persian, uh, with Muga empires, and he will have to make a trading with their uh, others, uh, uh, Bengal Sultanic, so, so that's why he have to use their uh, 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 Persian and the Arabic scripts, uh, Persian scripts in the Bengali. And then and the another thing with use of the Persian is Persian was the Lango Frank, Lango Franco of the region. And the until the until the early nineteen until uh, the um, later eighteenth century. So in this matter, all communication uh, have to make uh, through the Persians with the others who have uh, like a Mughals and the uh, European. They are Arakanese king. Uh, Arakanese uh, have to make a uh, communication through the Persian language. So they have to use uh, they have to use the Persian as official language, not only the Arakanese. This is another, uh, these, these pictures show the Namraud um, the metropolitan city have a connection with the connection with the or other uh, connection with the foreign um, uh, country. So the, the, the ruins is the dust factories from the Namraud and dust and then the 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 the, the canon is show canon is the Portuguese canon actually not so really Portuguese it's Iberian because of the so at the time in Spain Spain and uh, Portuguese is one so um, so these uh, these canon is now uses by the uses in the Mao and then it's now is now is in Edinburgh. so these um, there's a lot of evidence show the Mao we have a connection with the Java. Because we can, we have found, we have found the uh, ceramics uh, evidence. So we have uh, some in and, and then um, Dash. We have uh, a lot of VOC records and Portuguese um, and or other Indian states and and their Sri Lanka, especially for the religious purpose. Um, Thank you very much. So today talk where we finish here. Thank you, Mr. Uh, that was That's a very uh, uh, of uh, Pagan and not uh, It was a uh, you know it was a very sweeping overview. But I I really learned a lot. Uh, I was taken by what you said about um, how the, uh, the priest in the Father Farinha in the 16th century, in the 15th century, uh, had a comparison between uh, Venice and, and Ra'u. And now that you're in Venice now, what did you think about his comments? Do you think that Ra'u is more, uh, more uh, complex than Venice? Um. 
Yeah, actually, I've been um, here, so I can say something. <laughs> I've been in Rao and I've been back, so I can say something. Because of the, uh, he, he, at first, so it's so different, you know, because of the Rao is now is uh, uh, abundant, uh, uh, how to say, it's, everything is uh, ruinous. And then all the structure, I um, mean, like uh, all the ancient structure is broken. All ancient structure is not functioning anymore. Like uh, all the water management system is uh, uh, finished. There is uh, done already. So, but the bandit is still working, and they, 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 it's perfectly. It's uh, like all all bandits. So, but the uh, yeah, but the, the monks, the, the 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 monks, what the monks is, I think, is true because of the. The bandit just have a, it's not a complicated structure, it's have a, only have a waterway and a bridge, that's all. It's not that complicated. It's, it's the island with their waterways and bridge. Um, now we have a more complicated, the old waterway is they have to create. It's not like a, inside the, it's the middle of the, it's not middle of the sea. Now is the old, old waterway they have to create and the, they have to, and then it's not not only the waterway, but also they have some mountains and the other structure. So all they have to create. So, um, yeah. So that's why I would say it's more complex. Sure. Uh, all right. So let me open the the floor to questions and answers. I, I just want to remind everybody to please use the the Q and A uh, uh, block in the in the room panel there. We already have uh, four questions, so I, I'm going to start with some questions. Um, the first one is from uh, Madeline Spangler, and she asks, um, what is the approximate date of construction for the earliest Bagan temple? Uh, the number is uh, 1339, as you showed uh, earlier. Um, earliest uh, construction of Bagan? Mm -hmm. Of the Bagan, uh, of the Bagan stupa, uh, particularly the one that you call number one three three nine. Okay. Ah. One three one three three nine is the fourteenth century already. Oh yes, I'm I'm looking at the at the slides now and I don't see. Uh, or maybe maybe I'll get some clarification, but um. What is the earliest uh, Bagan temple? Bagan. Um, it's a Pangu temple. It's, uh, sorry. Okay, 1239 is the temple number. Sorry. Yes. And what is the date of construction of that? Yeah, we don't know exactly, but uh, it's possible, possibility because of the iconographic we have found, we don't have an inscription there, but uh, we found a similar to, uh, um, body support image with a um, few three characters. So it could be 9th to 10th century, I guess. So, so on that note, I'd like to add that um, um, Many many temples in Bagan they are dated by iconography and architecture. Right? Not they're not directly dated. The, Sorry. The, the dates that you have for the temples in Bagan they usually date them because of the iconography and the architecture and the style, but not really because of any um, radiocarbon date, any direct date. Oh, yeah, maybe because of the is. I mean, like it's a absolute dating is a pretty much difficult because of the, you know, like it's a just three hundred years. Bagan is a, um, a radio carbon date. Of, uh, you need a lot of radio carbon dating to 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 get the exact date. It's not uh, possible to get, uh, not easy to get. Yeah. So just just a note for all our all our viewers here. It's very difficult to to. I see date temples and a lot of the dating is done by style. Yes. Um, so uh, a second question from uh, Robin Drummond. Uh, and she asks, uh, what, you mentioned that there's a relationship between the painting, the mural paintings in Pagan mm -hmm. and uh, Himalayan art. Do you have any uh, 
can you recommend any archaeological sites or any book if uh, they wanted to find out more about uh, Himalayan art? I mean, so I, I know the, uh, it was the, him, I mean, this, pro, this uh, topic is a study, it's uh, usually by the, I think, speaker on uh, So uh, I can uh, send the uh, um, articles for that. Oh, well, could I ask you to maybe leave your email address in the chat box? And then if anyone has questions, um, uh, they can email them. So, uh, Robin, please, please email Robin uh, um, uh, for, for more information on this. Uh, another question from Nibedita um, uh, Nasca um, of India, and, and uh, I'm not sure if they're uh, This person asked if uh, you mentioned that the donations were, were done by kings. But is there any evidence of donation that were done by uh, lay people or by women? Because uh, in India, they have evidence of donation given to Buddhist structures uh, that were done uh, by women as well. All right. Sorry. Is this about the connection of? No, well, it's about the, the donations uh, given in uh, Bagan or in, in Papu. Uh, were um, donations only given by kings or were donations given um, by normal people? Yeah, yeah. And so in the donation is made by, uh, not only by the king, but uh, most significant uh, kings. And sometimes uh, it's uh, organized by kings. I mean, again, not the king is uh, not just king is maybe not all donor, but uh, he organized for the donation maybe. So that's uh, something like that. And then, um, and then we can also found that many do many uh, I would say donation from the others rank of other uh, civilians and other rank of the officers is also in Maori Maori periods. We can we we can also see a lot of evidence for that. And um, also Bagan, Bagan also have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, other donations, but the most significant are made by kings. Was there evidence of donations by women? Sorry? Uh, was there evidence of donations by women? Women? Uh, yes, I think, yes. Oh, so you find the same in India as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, another question from um, Betty Tom, and she asks, um, Argenti is um, Latin for silver, so was um, Arakan, the region uh, Arakan, was it known for silver mining before? Actually, actually, Arakan have do not have a silver mine, so this is one of the, all, this is the yeah, always, this is that was always questions, but uh, I think is the door gate gateway of the silver mining. I mean, like uh, the silver mines and gold mine, all the mine is. And then I think is the now the near the Yunnan and then near the Kachin states and the northern Shan states. But they are all are inland regions. Right. So Maui is a seaport. So all these, so we can be yeah. We can be the door for the, this kind of uh, uh, trade. Oh. Uh, so, so what, what you're saying is that Arakan is, is called Arakan because of the gateway to the silver overland. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeffrey Benjamin asks, how did Rock U become so ruined? Uh, why is Nokwu so um, so ruined or so abandoned now? Now? Yeah. Oh, okay. In the 1780, 1784, uh, oh, so Mao was uh, occupied occupying with the Burmese invasion of Burmese. Uh, after that, I think they destroyed many things, and then especially. Many of um, uh, people have to run away to the current Bangladesh 
regions and then so now it became never never be, never became so it's a uh, never uh, became uh, its original and then yeah mm. and then so and not, and not, not only that so it's it's all organization is treasure is broken something like that after the bomb is ambitions like uh, the sangha society is not like a um, or a previous ones um it became the Burmese, uh, Burmese Dominion Sangha Society, and the others, or, or all others, the uh, organizational and the institutional functions are doesn't work anymore. So it uh, became um, like this. So this this uh, calls to find uh, what we spoke about in our in our first lecture. We, we talk about uh, there are different kingdoms in in Southeast Asia that that arose and fell. Uh, and, and some of them fall and then they don't come up again. Sometimes you only see the ruins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an example. Yeah. South Asia is always like this, rise and down, right? rise and fall, always happen like this. Um, Ted Zotun asks, when did people find the earliest evidence of Arakan? Oh. Earliest evidence of when the people from... Um, Earliest evidence for Arakan. You know, I mean, question is uh, for their earliest evidence for Arakans. Um, yeah, actually, that, that's a. Uh, maybe I can ask uh, Ted Zotun to, to rephrase that question. Do you mean uh, when did people find the earliest evidence, or when was uh, when was the earliest evidence of Arakan uh, dated to? Uh, this question can be can be. Um, uh, interpreted two ways. So may I ask you to, to rephrase the question and ask it again? Uh, Professor Kwa Chong Guan asks if uh, whether you find any evidence of uh, Mahayana Buddhism in uh, Bagan today. Mahayana Buddhism in Bagan today? Yes. Like like do you do you find any evidence of uh, Mahayana uh, Mahayana Buddhism in Bagan? Okay, yeah, we can still find a lot of evidence of the Mayana Buddhism in tam temple, like especially like Nagayon, Abayana, you can still find a lot of uh, Mahayana's evidence. Not only so, the Mahayana, but also the folk religion as well. Oh, okay. So, so um, um, because one of, the, one of the interpretations of Bagan is that it's all Hinayan, or all, um, all Theravada. You're saying that uh, there is both. At the same time, it is both, uh, both, uh, even uh, also Hinduism as well. Uh, some of the Hinduism, and uh, we found the two types of Hinduism as well: Brahminism and uh, Brahminism and uh, Vishnavas, Vishnavites. So, and then uh, also some Mahayanism and then uh, some uh, maybe Theravadas. So, yes, it's, uh, it's, uh, you can appreciate. Uh, some are, is uh, some are overlapping. So maybe sometimes, sometimes you can differentiate from the iconographies and uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, here is a question from uh, Pook Hirada. Uh, thanks for the presentation. I am interested in the maritime connections between ancient Myanmar and Persia. Um, do you know if there are any um, Arab evidence or? Or ancient Myanmar, so not just uh, uh, Rokhu, but also on Pagan. Is there any any evidence from Arab texts? Um, there is some. Uh, 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 I think not so many. Not, I don't. I don't think they are not uh, Arab. Not not really the Arab Arabians, uh, Arabics. I mean Arabic, but uh, it's uh, usually Persians. Yes. Mostly so, Persians. Is there any? Uh, Evidence from Persian texts uh, that talk about. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, same script, but it's a totally different language. So, right. yeah. So, yeah, uh, like name in the coins, name in the coins, if they still use Arabic because of the, uh, they, I think even they use the Persian, so, but uh, the title is given the Arabic, something like that. So, they sometimes in the coins you can see Arabic, but uh, and the text, usually text is just mostly persons. Okay, Pook, I, I think there's something there. So maybe get in touch with Yemet. If, if you're not 
if you're not in touch with him, uh, get in touch with me and then I will, I will connect that. Um, um, Yu No Tang asks, is, uh, is the Arakan area the same where the Rohingyas live now? Ah, there's a, it's also an interesting question. So, um, the name, uh, the name uh, Rohingya, this came from so Rohang. Rohang is the uh, same, uh, same uh, with the uh, Arakans and Rakhines. So we pronounce Rakhines, but they pronounce Rohang. And some pronounce Roshan. Mm. It's the same place. So it's the same place. So it's me like, uh, if you like, uh, um, it's uh, literally Rohingya means son of Arakans. It uh, doesn't mean any of the it doesn't really mean the ethnicity so religious religion, but it is mean the people of Arakan, so literally. But uh, but uh, it's time change already, you know. Uh, so identity can be changed. You know? Thank you. Uh, all right. Well, we're gonna we're well, coming up to the last two questions, and uh, I'll ask you if anybody else wants to put in. All right. So we've got a few more questions. Um, but seeing how it's our last um, uh, eight minutes, we might uh, just in case you you we don't get it to all the questions, uh, you know, please feel free to email us and then we'll we'll, we'll send the questions on. Um, so well, the next question is: Are there any archaeological evidence of constant exchanges? Uh, or is there any evidence of um, exchange of people and artisans? Uh, or stone masons between the Indian kingdoms and the kingdoms of Bagan. Yes, yes, because of the we even found the inscription for that. We oh, have yes. found, yeah, yeah. So like uh, Indian is we call Gala. So so these uh, these people, uh, some artisans, uh, and then uh, some uh, how does it professional is come and and work uh, so. The, uh, in, there's a donation inscription they mentioned it. So, so definitely that, that is true. Thank you. And that question was from BJ. I forgot to mention the name. Uh, another question from uh, Hyung Mi Kim. Um, you mentioned before, and I was curious about this as well. You said that the color blue was not used in uh, Bagan art in the, in the murals, blue color. Uh, did you? Uh, does this mean that blue had a symbolic meaning, like blue, blue to use blue, or just because there was no uh, blue color, that no one could use blue? I think it's because not because of the blue, maybe because of the they don't they don't how do they they don't find the, they don't know the pigment blue pigment, but uh, it's very easy to know. Is uh, but. Uh, Maybe they use, but you know, is color blue color can be changed to the gray, grayish, and black. If at times, so it changed. Maybe it changed, or we just don't use. I don't know. But the later periods, we use blue. I mean, not become later later periods. Yeah, I was I was thinking about the same thing too because in in uh, cave paintings we don't find blue common as well, and that's because there's no blue color. But also. Uh, over time, some colors can change. So, you know, uh, some, some might be very bright red after the years become dark red or orange and green. Yes, yes. Uh, our, our last question is from uh, Mei Tu Mong Mong. Uh, you mentioned that um, one of the Buddha image in Bagan, can, I think she's talking about the perspective uh, where you yeah. mentioned that Buddha heads are bigger and then the bodies are smaller. Uh, she said, I think it is a kind of uh, low tall pie Buddha statue, isn't it? Ah, Luro Pie is, um, is uh, I think it's 11th century, so it does, it's more like Palat, uh, Palat uh, image, not, uh, not like a little curious. It's so, I mean, like, the head is not that big. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and these uh, these Buddha statues with the large with the larger heads are they found in 
in only in the Baran period, or do they do they uh, happen in later times? It also continues in the later periods, uh, like especially in one period, it continues. But like after the summer, uh, later is more 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 tend to be beautifying more than this, and then that time is more focus on the look uh, Buddha look great. Buddha is uh, you know, is uh, looking at you uh, from the over <laughs> something that Buddha is bigger than you when you look at that. Okay, and I think we we've, we've come to the end of our questions. We've we've covered twelve questions today, which is I think the most we've covered in in any one uh, session. Uh, I, with that, I say I'd like to thank um, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Um, Ye Yin, for for sharing with us your, your knowledge. Uh, and i also like to thank uh, all of you, our participants, for, for joining us this morning. Uh, uh, and I hope you enjoyed the talk and I hope you learned something because I, I definitely did. And I, I, hope, uh, I hope you may uh, join us for our next talk on September 2nd, uh, which is on uh, by Dr. Farouk Yaya and he'll be talking about uh, Malay manuscripts. And so please, uh, please join us and hope to see you then. Um, yes, uh, and with that, uh, I will end the, the uh, session.